Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, December 9th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, it's Patch Tuesday, so let's jump in and see what Microsoft got for us. A total of 58 vulnerabilities were patched this month. That's actually less than we had uh, before this year. We usually had sort of around 100 vulnerabilities, I believe, each month, and only nine of this month's vulnerabilities are rated uh, critical. Now, as far as the critical vulnerabilities go, uh, there are uh, two with a CVSS score of 8.8 in Microsoft Dynamics. If you're running uh, this product, then certainly pay attention to them. Microsoft Exchange and uh, then again, SharePoint are others uh, with uh, critical vulnerabilities. So um, as usual, Microsoft Exchange, SharePoint are big targets, widely used and uh, probably more interesting here uh, to the average organization compared to Microsoft Dynamics. But then we also got a sort of interesting uh, knowledge base article or advisory regarding spoofing of uh, DNS responses. And uh, this specifically affects fragments. Now, uh, the ultimate problem that uh, fragmentation can make it easier uh, to spoof. Uh, DNS uh, has been known for, well, uh, I think at least uh, 10 years or so, keeps sort of getting uh, rediscovered, but has become more of a problem in recent years because of extended DNS option zero, which enables DNS servers to receive responses that exceed 512 bytes in UDP. Now, historically, of course, we had this 512 byte limit in order to prevent a fragmentation, but uh, that is really no longer uh, valid and Currently, actually, most DNS servers advertise that they're willing to accept UDP responses up to four kilobytes in size, which, of course, definitely will get fragmented if you ever see a response that large, given that a typical network MTU is still only around 1500 bytes. Well, uh, so in response to this, what Microsoft actually recommends there they're not issuing a patch for this problem, but they're recommending that you are setting the maximum UDP packet size for your Microsoft DNS resolvers to 1,221 bytes. This size is likely chosen uh, to fit well within the 1500 bytes, even if you happen to have some tunneling or such where you may have additional headers. So uh, that should be safe from fragmentation for the most part. This problem with fragmented UDP responses is not unique uh, to Microsoft. Other DNS servers uh, are potentially susceptible here as well. So maybe I'll put together a quick video or so about this uh, in the next uh, couple of days. And then, of course, uh, we also got patches uh, by Adobe. And uh, probably most notable is the patch we didn't get. We didn't get any patches for Adobe Flash Player. This is the last month uh, where Adobe Flash Player is uh, really a supported technology. So this would kind of be Adobe's last opportunity to sort of give us uh, some patches. But no, it didn't get anything. But instead, we did get patches for Adobe Prelude, Experience Manager, Lightroom, and also for Adobe Acrobat and Reader, which surprised me a little bit because we just got a patch for Adobe Acrobat and Reader on November 3rd, and then another one for the Android version of Adobe Reader on November 10th. Now, what's Interesting, on the other hand, is that there is no real uh, detail here about uh, this update. It just says that Adobe is planning to release security updates for uh, Adobe Acrobat and Reader for Windows and Mac OS uh, the week of December 7th. But uh, then they refer to their blog and just say, hey, uh, keep watching it uh, for more details. So Really, we don't yet know what and how many vulnerabilities uh, are being addressed with this update. 
Typically not a participant of a patch Tuesday, but the OpenSSL project also released an update today fixing a high severity flaw CVE 2020-1971 in OpenSSL. This affects OpenSSL 1.1.1 and 1.0.2. An exploitation of this flaw could lead to a denial of service, so essentially crash your server. And in addition, and I don't really have time to go into all the details, we also got updates from IBM, SAP, and Kubernetes. Where in particular, the Kubernetes flaw kind of looks interesting because it is apparently not patchable. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.